Let's let's talk for just a few minutes about I'm a Virgo, and I'll I'll I won't spoil anything, and in a sense, it can't be spoiled because it's a season that ends with many, 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 many unresolved questions. And don't worry, I'll come back at the end to to come back. And if you have any comments or questions about the book about anything i'll happily come back and deal with all of that i'll come back more with the with the payment options and all of that and i won't take long here with this uh unless we you you all want to chat a little bit about it um but i do want to play a couple of clips from boots riley who is the director of this series uh and i read i actually read a couple of articles um about it Let's see, let me pull these up here. So so we can get a, before I play these clips, that'll, uh, so I had to, I had to um, pull the PDFs because the, uh, these are New York Times articles, they're behind, they were behind a paywall. But let me, let me move down here. There we go, it's a little better. Um, and I, so my initial first thoughts are, because it is, I get why these reviews are positive. I, I understand why the New York Times and others would find this a, a series positive and why I would still enjoy it to a certain extent. I get why Boots Riley could make a rare visit to Sway on Sirius XM and say some of the things that he says and still get away with it. Not much, not often. And and the, the series, I think, definitely should be made and should definitely be discussed, should definitely, to the extent people can stomach, if they don't have a workaround, seeing something on Amazon, it deserves to be considered as much as so much other uh, horrific nonsense in, in, in pop culture and commercial media is, is. And I've found myself feeling increasingly sorry for intelligent black culture producers, filmmakers who know that they're constrained and have to what I've been saying since Jordan Peele is like the Jordan Peele effect. Th that it's almost necessary to do something in a horror, comedic, sci-fi, something s s which is not my preference. That's not a genre I'm a fan of. I've never been a fan of it. I've never been a, a Star Trek fan or anything like that. I've don't hate on it per se but it's just not my thing one of the reasons why i think i never got into the kung fu flicks like a lot of other kids is because once i realized that they weren't dealing with the reality that i understood it to be with the in terms of the acrobatics and the flying in the air and all that i was like wait a minute this isn't once i found out the wwe was rigged I, the wwf at the time i was like i can't pay attention to it I, like i need a certain level i need it to be in what i understand to be this reality that's ultimately Obviously, they can do – anyway, that's – so So even, you know, the superhero stuff, the Marvel stuff, I'm not ever really a fan of that kind of stuff, per se. That would not be my number one genre. But I understand why they have to do it, that there's almost no other way to raise the kinds of questions and issues that Boots and others are trying to raise without doing it, I think, is, is what's happening here. Um. So as I was saying, unlike the Tyrone f flip film, this one, as much as it goes into a sci-fi unreality, it does offer a very real analysis of capital claims of, uh, it claims communism, the, it claims a defense of labor strikes. It explains in, 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 in stylized but meticulous detail how people are being exploited and what practically can be done legally and above board relatively speaking 
to fully correct and end this system. So, so my, as I was just saying, I just don't like the genre. And I want films that allow the exploration of blackness and humanity and revolution that are based in this reality. So someone on Instagram got at me and said that they lost faith in my movie picks because they watched that that what they said was some silly Scottish movie when I suggested that Banshees of Inisherin is a good film. Uh, and no disrespect, but I keep getting confused if it was Irish or Scottish. But the point is, I think it's Irish. Maybe it was. I can't now. I can't remember. But, but. But they were saying it was slow and boring and how could I recommend it and this, that, and the third. And that's and my thing is I don't need a lot of action. In fact, I don't often want action and sci-fi and wormholes and parallel multiverses and 13-foot giants. I don't want really, I really don't want all of that. I want not that not this can't happen in these spaces, and, and I think was done in this one and in sorry to bother you. But I, I want just really good story acting. I thought Banshees of Inisherin was was riveting, actually, despite being a relatively slow. But I didn't find it to be slow at all. Like it was, it, it, like I'm I'm often more bored with with Fast and Furious <laughs> style action. It's like <laughs> there's no plot here. This is so crazy. This is absurd even before they got really crazy with these more recent in the series. So I, anyway, so I liked what I saw them doing here. I liked the way they, they I thought, were making fun of Cosby. We can maybe come back to that after more people see, see it. I liked how they worked in Slavoj Žižek and other uh, 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 others through, through commentary and poetry and, 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 and other forms of, of uh, production. So anyway, I... But I just wish we didn't have to get it in this genre. That's just a personal preference. Um, but as they say here, like in this one story, uh, Boots Riley's surreal satire about a teenage giant and an authoritarian superhero is a larger-than-life achievement. Boots Riley doesn't aim small. In his 2018 directorial debut, Sorry to Bother You, the frontman of the revolution-minded hip-hop group The Coup, created a chaotic fantasia of corporate exploitation that strained at the seams of, of its indie movie clothing. In his magnificently batty TV series, I'm Virgo, which arrives on Amazon Prime video, da, 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 the, screen, the screen may be smaller, but Riley's satirical ambitions are 13 feet tall. And that's literally the case because that's the size of the protagonist Cootie, Jarrell Jerome, an Oakland teenager whose aunt and uncle Carmen Ijogo and Mike Epps have kept him hidden to protect him from a world that will see him as a monster. People are always afraid, his aunt says, and you are a 13-foot-tall black man. So that's that's the 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 basic premise, the that that the setting, so to speak. Um as this article says, Virgo is is this is in its spirit of Biff Bam Pow, anti-capitalism is broadly concerned with co-optation, with selling out, and whether the ma master's gadget tool belt can ever dismantle the master's secret lair. In Virgo, when Cootie gets involved with an Occupy-style protest led by his activist friend Jones, played by Kara Young, a character I like very much, the hero and the media demonize him. In both cases, when humans prove inconvenient, capitalism creates monsters. That's... I... I I like how they in this this is being interpreted here. Uh, they make very clearly they point out that all art is propaganda. It's, it's explicitly stated in the film. Every movie, as Boots Riley has said elsewhere, is a message movie, and I agree fully with that. There's no such thing as a movie without politics or a message. Um, and as they conclude here, you know, I mean, this to me is a New York Times kind of conclusion, but I'm a Virgo is hardly the most subtle show of the year. It, it, it is by its own definition propaganda, but it's absolutely it is absolutely art. So, again, they like it, but they want to recognize it and call it propaganda in a way that I'm not sure that they would call other films which of course are but this one is it is it is propaganda it is pro worker pro communist pro armed self defense propaganda 
it's pro understanding the relationship between as they talk about in the in the series prop of violence and poverty it's just that they don't you know they they, they but they have to have that little line in there because it is they they're and i can't honestly figure out why they like it other than that it's it's still couched in this everybody's in the hood in oakland uh, uh, black youth portrayed very much as whites would feel comfortable seeing black people portrayed in in, in stereotypical, but often very realistic, obviously, uh, portrayal of young black hood youth. So we get a lot of that same basic context, which is both unfortunately real, stereotyped, and the preference of an affluent white audience. So all of these contradictions are there. But and but then but but even though they are giving positive a positive review, maybe not wanting to be seen as so overtly condemning something, uh, they do have to be remindful, you know, or mindful and reminding of the fact from their point of view that it is propaganda because it is, but only propaganda. But they can call it that because it's a pro worker, pro communist message. If it was pro capitalist, if it was. Top Gun, it 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 is less likely to be described as propaganda. Uh, so same thing here in this this uh, piece by Reggie Ugwu in the also in the New York Times, uh, I think, or is or is this? It was one. Yeah, I think they're both in the New York Times. Um, talking about it, 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 it. Anyway, it's just it's just another positive review. It's just another positive review. This this one part here is that. Um, that I actually did like this part here. The circumstances are fantastical, but the fears of his aunt and uncle express about the likelihood that the world will misjudge or harm him, and this is why they initially don't want him to leave the house, will be familiar to any black parent or child. So again, this is the point. They're couching very real and appreciate, uh, appreciable experiences and and uh, uh, uh lived experiences of black people and black youth and, and, and Oakland and et cetera. Uh, but of course doing it in, as it says here in fantastical circumstances, but when asked, how did you interpret the symbolism of Cootie's size? Jerome says, I asked, um, who's one of the, 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 um, the, the young man who plays the lead actor, main character. I asked myself that question a lot. And one of the beautiful things about boots is that he won't answer it. It's all left to interpretation. And I think that's fair. So again, Sometimes I'm frustrated when artists give that answer, but but that's 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 fair. It is up to interpretation. Why why is this the setting, per se? Why why is this per se the setting? Um. Okay, let me see. There was one more. Was there something in this? Yeah, the Guardian also praised it. Uh, it's the same same basic points that are being made there. All right, so let me bring up these clips though, because I I was it's almost shocking to see. Although I don't maybe I don't watch Sway in the morning enough anymore, but I don't you know it's shocking to see someone say. So let's see if we can get since. We're, just a couple of minutes of this here uh, a little while ago. And check the, the Maggot Brain, which is a great, great, great track by Parliament Funkadelic uh, shirt on. But but check out this. this. They're talking about how they knew each other growing up in Oakland and they went to high school together. And then he goes, it'll be. It'll Lee, be you know, go until now and, and, and everything that I'm doing. Um, th though, speaking of those values, that's that's basically the thing that guide me and mm -hmm. got me involved in more radical mm -hmm. uh, organizations, organizations that said, yes, we want to change the world. And this is exactly what we think to, needs to be changed mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. the world, mm -hmm. that we need to have a world in which the people democratically control the wealth that we create with our labor. Mm -hmm. Right. And so. Uh, so, yeah. So. So I put that into all of my work. I'm a communist. And um, what and, and that means exactly that right there. Mm -hmm. And right now we're in this period 
in which uh, a lot of people are deciding that they want to figure out how to change the world around them, mm-hmm. right? Right now, um, in the United States, for over the last three years, there's been roughly 3,000 strikes in the United States. 3,000. Okay. If you go on this thing, paydayreport.com, they've tracked all the strikes since March 2020. Mm-hmm. And it's been roughly 3,000 strikes, and we're in the it, meaning that we're in the biggest strike wave the U.S. has seen since the 1970s. Mm. And and some of these strikes are, you know, just you know, for everything from the Waffle House to fast food to uh, 30,000 carpenters striking on the East Coast to right now, uh, 160,000 actors striking and 11,000 writers striking with with this thing and and some of these things are just about wages and people getting their fair share of the wealth that's going on but some of them are about changing bigger things in Oakland California just a a, a month ago uh the teachers went on strike they had uh, definitely a wage demand and they won that and they stayed out on strike and people are like why are y'all still on strike it's because they were going for these common good proposals yeah so oakland has a lot of so i'm gonna stop that part there um but the whole interview and i'll make sure to put it in the show description is is this it was fascinating and there's one more clip i'm going to come back and play but but the, the, the it's it's important that he mentions the str- all these strikes happening because this is a major theme of this series so so i hear you you know doc jab how can this be any better how could this be better like what would the difference be if they let boots run and do it for real so i don't know first of all let me say i don't know and and a lot of what i'm saying is 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 a criticism for me it's just a it's just a personal preference a bias against the genre I'm just not a fan of horror, sci-fi, again, anything that's not based solidly in this reality. It's just it's just a preference. I just need that. So so for me it would have been it, 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 I don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm not I'm not I'm not an I'm not an artist and I, I don't know. I would just if the focus could be making these points and telling this story without all the fantasticalness of it. And I know they could do it. And again, I don't need a lot of action. I don't need, I don't need a lot of big budget explosions and this, that, and the third. Um, and in fact, so like, so I don't know. But what I what I'm what I'm suggesting is is that they know that this is maybe the only genre, probably the only genre that's likely to get something. I mean, to say overtly, and I could just feel it through the, even through the YouTube, when he says on on Sway, I'm a communist, and starts talking about strikes. And the way the video ends, the way the segment ends, it even almost feels like they're like, ah, okay, love to have you back. Another like it, it just felt like I don't know. It's just it just felt at the time watching it like we're gonna applaud you, but we're gonna get you out of here and get back to the to the regular you know run of things here. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. So a lot of what I'm saying is just a preference. I I like what they're doing. I like the messaging. And that's why I'm saying in this, it's way better than the Tyrone f- film for me because there is an analysis here that is based in the real world, which is which is what I loved about it. It's just that they have to go through all of this stuff with superheroes, and I don't actually like the actor, the, the white dude that's the actor for that. I don't know, I, f- I forgot his name, but but anyway, but again, so some of it is just my bias there, but I but the, you know they got to do it with the superheroes and the the thirteen foot kid and the you know. Um, which to me ends up like they they have to go through like a sex scene because of course the question of if he's thirteen feet tall, so there has to there has to be this this and and I 
and I thought it was cute and romantic, and I really liked the actress that that plays his love interest. I thought, you know, she she did a great job of conveying all this emotion. Again, the best parts for me are those scenes where he shows up at the restaurant she's working at, and it's just him being an awkward kid, and she being someone who is clearly giving him that look of holla at me. But it's done in such like before they do the sex scene, which is always for me at this point. I'm like, I don't, I don't want any of it. But but up until that, it's like, look at all that's being conveyed with no. There is no sex scene. There is no semi nudity and focus on people's genital sizes, and there's none of that. There's just that look. That as I get older, you know, you know. Thankfully, my wife still looks at me that way. But, you know, we remember that look of someone, especially you've never met them. It was such a good scene for me. Those are, or scenes. Those were my favorite when he would start to show up. And it's just like she's just looking at him and you're like, am I reading this right? And it's like, of course you're reading this right. But of course, I'm not going to say anything yet. I got to I got to go through this, the 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 what is it the routine of going back and forth with the burgers and getting more burgers that i don't even want i like all of that kind of stuff and that for those moments took me out of the fantastical nature of it in the sci-fi nature and it just got it back to raw storytelling and really good acting so i don't know i don't know i think that was a longer answer than um thank you that I, all I can say is I picked the the one of the available themes. Uh, so shout out to Paul Grave. Um, <laughs> she did, she did. Um, anyway, let me play this other clip real quick from that same interview because this really dovetails with what uh, I'm talking about in in my work here and um and it was it was dope to see it and I just could feel the tension um <laughs> like in the 90s there was a lot of black movies where the the happy ending was yeah. everybody moved to Atlanta Mm-hmm. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, it's a ha- oh, we moved to Atlanta, Atlanta. and that's a, you know because that was the idea. The, the the idea that we're selling to us is that all we got to do in it, it, that capitalism isn't the problem. That all we need is black capitalism. We need uh, black business owners, black police, black mayors, and it'll all be good. And that's what Atlanta st- stood yep, and yeah. stands for, mm-hmm. right? But as we can see, you could go to Atlanta and you got some people with big houses and you got a lot of people struggling yeah. and having Message. to hurt each other in order to just survive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Having to hustle. So um, that what we need to do is have us have a situation in which their people really own those yeah. things. Mm-hmm. So can you have. um can you have a whole, not just even one studio right. that is collectively owned? That would be a step. But can you have a whole economy that's collectively owned? Uh, and you can. Yeah. Message. You can. You can. It's they're not going to give it to you. Okay. Right. It's uh-huh. going to take organizing. It's going to take and and these strikes, uh-huh. these strike waves, are a first step in that where people are realizing. Okay, we know that that power that wealth makes power Mm -hmm. we know that matter of fact that's what we're told when we when we see somebody with a lot of money or you know even a rapper that makes a lot of money we kind of cheer for him because we feel like that's us getting power right right and but in reality the rest of us don't have that power and they don't even have as much power as we think they do and, and what's happening is people are realizing, okay, if wealth makes power, what creates the wealth? We create the wealth. We're the ones, you know, working on the job. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that's what, you know, that's what creates that wealth. So all we got to do is withhold our labor okay. and be like, you know, collectively, yeah, so we, you we're it. shutting things we're down. This is the setup we want. Now, that's happening in little ways all over the place. And as it 
as it gets bigger, it's going to get more coordinated. Yeah. And where we can shut whole industries down. I love it. And then if you watch the rest of the clip, he says at one point, y'all will come to work one day and just decide we keep in serious. We keep in serious XM radio. And y'all just gonna have to deal with it. And they just they just start applauding. <laughs> and then you can feel they started, uh, uh. But it was great. It was great. Um, how does he get films made openly admitting being a communist? I'm intrigued. I honestly don't know. I don't know. Again, I I listen. I I don't know. My my Baseline starting point is that, again, we are living at a particular time where the consolidation of ownership of mass media outlets, the ability to deliver as many messages as possible, owned by a handful to as many as possible, but also at a time where that is still not as consolidated in terms of streaming as it will be later. So, in other words, I think that that so I'm, what I'm saying is we live in a moment where, again, more than any other time, all version all versions and arguments and stories can be raised. The question is how much, what the frame will be, and how much distribution of the message will there be, and then what will be done around that message. I guess I would add now. Uh, to subdue whatever radical or revolutionary content it contains. So that's what I'm mean to say is we're, we're at a moment where there's massive consolidation and control of propaganda, but 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 even within that, there is this fragmented, still yet not yet fully consolidated streaming situation where Amazon is competing with Netflix, competing with Paramount, competing with Hulu, competing with Discover, competing with Peacock, competing with, I think I said Netflix, YouTube. Um, they're all competing with one another. There will be more levels of consolidation, but right now there are these little cracks and crevices and, and, they also know that this will be subsumed beneath the cloning of Tyrone, whatever the hell else, Jack Ryan, whatever the hell else Amazon has got on there. Uh, same thing. Sway will have this conversation, but it wasn't long. And in the context of all that Sway and, and all that Sirius is doing, it's going to get washed away and it's there's not a sustained level of discussion so that's why if for nothing else i wanted to have some conversation about it because whatever that i think we should be doing with bpm i would want to encourage more discussion of things like this because as i'm watching it i'm thinking these are really good decent talented really talented and very uh, uh, um, clear people trying to do something here, but they got to work within these constraints. So it's not going to look the way I would want it to look. I know that. Uh, but uh, um, so I don't know. That's a rambling answer. I, that, those are just some of the, the way I try to put it together when I'm thinking about the same thing. How is this getting made? How is he getting on And I want to know, I mean, I just would I just would love to, first of all, I would want to double check and make sure I saw the full unedited version of that interview. So I'll put the link and you all can check that. But I would love to know what Sway must have been hearing in his headphones from the producers. Rap, rap, rap. And then what else has gone on after that? Um... I don't know. I got an alert. I get alerts on Patreon all the time. So, but yeah. Uh, and then, you know, 
there's enough sci-fi. I mean, it's not, I mean, yeah, the New York Times is calling it propaganda, but it's, again, it's relative to what we're used to seeing. Again, my argument with they clone Tyrone is that that there was there was no analysis. Not really. It was just, see, Illuminati, cloning, conspiracy. But Boots is saying characters in his film, they do some brilliant. And this is where I get it. The sci-fi makes sense. And this part, I get it because they could do things cinematically to explain what he just did in the context of a series that is targeting the people who probably just watched Clone Tyrone or who will end up watching it and other things like that. I'm just convinced that they could do it in a way that suits... Anyway, it doesn't matter. The point is, but he makes... They get all of that in there. But there's still enough sci-fi. There's still enough... Again, maybe that's why you got to have the sex scene. Maybe that's why you got to have... Although Mike Epps, I think, is... First of all, he's, he's, he is very talented. I think dude can actually really act beyond just, I know he, maybe he's playing the same character or another version. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm doing too much, but I really like Mike Epps. And in the context where he's not, maybe, I don't know, he's subdued or more mature or whatever. I I, I liked, uh, um, and I and I, I won't go too much with it, but I like how they they handled him and and um, I keep forgetting the sister's name, but the, his the, uh, the, their their relationship. Um, and I like what their conclusions are politically, to a certain extent. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, I just think that there was enough. Yeah, they're going to be uncomfortable, but there's enough. You know, there's enough other stuff in there that it's not it's not too much. <laughs> That's what we all try to do. <laughs> I agree. Uh, also, when Boots Riley began, much of his style had been considered avant-garde or left mainstream and hence a crossover. I mean, again, Boots, you know, the coup end up having... You know, like a lot of radical black art has this strong white following. And then he had that band with Tom Morello, which opened up another. Um, oh, man, what what was the name of the band again? Oh, and I loved it, too. Man, a couple of years ago, they did a show at College Park. University of Maryland, right out in the quad, was not well attended. It was it was crazy, and it was off the it was off the meat rack, as they used to say. Some used to say. Had my daughter there. She got to meet Boots and the, and the sister that was lead singing for them. Um, no, and I get it, and I'm not saying, and and so I'm not disrespecting the genre. I'm just saying, I, I it's just not my. I get it. There's good sci-fi and bad sci-fi. There's good everything and bad everything. I just, it's just not my favorite. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe I don't know about a stand-up. Okay, maybe I, I haven't. I don't know if I've ever seen a full mic up stand-up, but I, I, whenever I've seen him act, even in these silly movies, I actually like him. I like I like his performance, and I liked him in this. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Um, I've never gotten the relaxed boots. The boots I get is is you know I've never got. He's a little. He's all business. A little you know. Uh, it will be interesting to see how transparent he can be about his politics as Hollywood consumes the new, new, the new, new black, i.e., the move to black horror and Afrofuturism is always attempts to do. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I, we'll see. There it is. That's right. Thank you, Street Sweeper Social Club. That's right. Yep. 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 
<laughs> um so anyway that was really that was i think that was all i had for this uh yeah that was it so but uh anyway i hope people watch it i hope people check it out and and you know and i would love to see more discussion of it uh, I'll be looking for more on these YouTube streets as well. But uh, again, same thing. Like I, I, I'm not a fan. Like the the horses and the this and the that and the, I, I, I just would prefer not to have to deal with that. But the, I thought again, the messaging is on point. And again, my point is, sorry to bother you. Is to class what get out is to race. And again, I think in terms of the timing. This film is is a materialist, a communist analysis, uh, 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 antithesis to the Illuminati vague conspiracy. I don't want to do nothing. I don't have nothing to offer. Tyrone, again, the sister. Again, even if you compare the, wow, that's interesting. If you compare the sister in. Because the two the two protagonists in each two well two of the protagonists in each f- film or series are women. And each are sort of the the mouthpieces for revolution. But check me if, if I'm wrong, let me know. Obviously, you will let me know. In Clone Tyrone, the sister is like, we need to have a revolution, but that's about all that she's got. It's vague. It's not clear. It's not, there's no real analysis. It's just like, let's go. Let's just go get them. Because, of course, all we see is that this has been reduced to a mad scientist and a, and a white man. And there's no, it's just like, you know. But the sister in I'm I'm a Virgo, she is... I'm not going to spoil anything, but she has her own special way of conveying clearly what is going on racially. I don't think she, they don't use the word, they don't use the, you know, my preferred colonialism, neo-colonialism, settler, colonial, they don't use that. It's It's a communist analysis, but it's clear. And it's not only clear in terms of what's happening to black people, to working people. Explaining even down to interpersonal relationships. But she says clearly and in terms that are applicable to our lives now, organize and strike. Little strike, big strike, small strike, general strike, strike. I'm like, and you get the, you know, in other areas, you get the uh, uh, explicit support for armed self-defense. So I'm just like, to me, the differences are very clear. The impact on me as a viewer is very clear, but both are still having to do this in the comedy, horror, sci-fi fantastic mystical type of context and that's the only thing that's a little that well to me is is the the the, the i'm just not this is not my preference are um <laughs> exactly Renee. In, in, in they clone tyrone her analysis is based on nancy drew as jackie explained on the remix exactly exactly but when you watch if you watch, I hope you watch, I'm a Virgo. It's it's night and day. It's universes apart in terms of analysis and clarity. And what but where there's a parallel is is the quality of the acting in, in the performance, which I thought was that. I mean, that's the other thing. I thought everybody was great. Yeah, I'm I, I'm good with the horse. Like I I just I just. <laughs> 
But you know, I mean, part of it again, I'm I'm a cliche. I'm an I'm an aging man. I mean, I grew up even living out here. I had one black and white television, the last block to get cable. And I remember that too, watching them everybody, all the white kids I was going to school with had cable already. The bougie black kids that I knew up the street had cable already, and they were still drawing the the orange line on the ground where they were eventually going to cut and lay the cable. I remember, I remember looking out the window. We lived on the third. The top was the top floor was the third floor, and I remember looking down like, "When are we gonna get it?" And I had the 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 pliers to turn the channel, and that was beautiful to me. Black and white little. TV screen literally smaller than than the the my laptop monitor screen right now. Click tin foil on the antenna. Click 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 loving it. So now like so in other words, I don't need all the CGI and and they did really good work in terms of the force perspective and all the things that they do to make the, to 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 do the deal with the size and all of that. Really good work. I mean, it's it's fascinating to see that how they do that. But I'm just saying, I don't need all of that to be entertained and enthralled. I just need a good story and some good acting. Anyway. Yeah, I'm trying not to ruin it. I'm not ruining it. I don't think I've given anything good away. Ooh, no, I have not. I have not. I will look that up. Anyway. um, But we can definitely come back and talk about that uh, again. Once more people have a chance to see it, maybe more people on the platform will get a chance to see it. We can we can do more about it because I hope more is done, and we should try to get boots on the platform. Uh, I don't think I have any lines to him anymore. So, I, but I, I would I would like to 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 have him come on here and 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 rock a little longer. 